After so long, for hundreds of years, we have waited. The Major is here. The opening stage is alive. Our Pickums may be up in flames, but above all else, I am here to bring you your real-time, on-the-beat, in-the-flesh recap so you can keep up with the action as the Major goes on over the next number of days. So let's kick off our Major coverage with a bang. We are exactly halfway through all of the shenanigans of the opening stage. All of the best of ones have happened. All of the best of ones have best of one. FlyQuest has shown everyone why you should never underestimate them even though I myself did. Complexity has made me feel nothing but suffering and pain. And along the way, we've been co-streaming, laughing, and indeed crying to all of the action as is unfolded. So let's not waste any more time. We have a lot to get into. Make sure you guys take a second, leave a like, leave a comment down below, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It helps out immensely in the YouTube algorithm, so thank you for doing it. As I just alluded to, I am co-streaming during the entirety of the major, even if it's destroying my sleep schedule bit by bit. So help compensate me for the suffering by dropping me a follow and showing up and chatting with everybody as the games go down. Twitch.tv slash LionheartCS2, linked in the description. Without any further ado, let's start talking shop. If you are new around here and you're not familiar with how we do things here on the channel, throughout the RMRs, basically, I've been just kind of going through the best of ones as quickly as possible and then spending more time to break down the best of three games as those are what are more interesting, generally speaking. So we're going to establish a baseline with all of our teams during the first set of best of ones. Then we're going to kind of speed through the rest, building up to our 2-0 advancement games and our 0-2 elimination games. Sound good? All right. And if you're not okay with that, um, to, you have no power here. Anyways, we start off the event with Virtus Pro taking on MIBR. First things first, what's really cool is that this is the first opening stage in quite a long time that has a crowd in attendance, which was really sick. Once they got the audio right on the PGL stream and we started to pipe in the crowd audio, it made for a great atmosphere. The crowds were sold out pretty much throughout all the games that I saw, which is a really cool thing to see from a production standpoint. MIBR starts off their major campaign with a 13-7 victory over Virtus Pro. It was on Ancient, and that's a map that I feel like Virtus Pro particularly struggle with because their T-sides are just relatively anemic most of the time. You also have MIBR playing at a very high clip to start things off. Insani, Lukowski, and Drop all having very good games. Insani, Lukowski specifically both going for 18 and 19 kills respectively, being above 1.4 and 1.5 rating as well. I really do think people have jumped the gun about Lukowski considering he struggled those first few games as he got into MIBR, but it's very clear the fit's going to be better in the long run. It does suck that that it comes at the expense of Virtus Pro, where James is coming off of the RMR where he had one of his best individual tournaments all year, and I felt like even though I hate Virtus Pro and I routinely say do not bet on them, I always also maintain that Virtus Pro is better, relatively speaking, than the competition below them. They don't tend to concede that many upsets. I thought considering this field, Virtus Pro would be in a shoe in to be one of the stronger teams. Uh, unfortunately, they've kind of started off falling flat as per usual. Electronic looked good in this game. James was definitely a step down from his RMR performance. Norbert was just absolutely miserable going 6-18, and, and sure, it's just first game, it's a best of ones, but considering I have Verse Pro in my pickums to go through 3-1-3-2, I would have liked them to start off a little bit stronger than this. Moving on to our next game, we had Furia taking on Gamer Legion, and shout out to B1 in our community Discord top link in the description, come hang out, who is Gamer Legion's strongest soldier, their number one fan. And hey, I had Furia going through in my pickums and not Gamer Legion, and they start off their major campaign by kicking Furia's ass. I mean, there's uh, not much more to say about it. Uh, Gamer Legion looked incredible on Vertigo, and Furia would have been competitive in this game. I mean, you got a 22 kill game out of Cello, but um, Mr. K Serato, Mr. Top 10 player for the year, K Serato, Mr. I have now signed a decade worth of contracts with this cursed organization, K Serato, decided to show up to the major and drop a big old goose egg in the first map, going 10 for 14. Yeah, Fallen, literally not that far behind him, also going 9 and 14. I mean, you had Skulls playing really good. If Case Rotto and Fallen weren't wretched, I bet you Furia would have won this game. Meanwhile, you didn't even get like an insane performance out of Flamis on the Game Religion side. It was Slend and Towson who were putting in good work. It's just ZTR runs an incredibly good shit, man. Game Religion are legit. I don't know if they're going to qualify at this point, more on that later. But man, I really hope they don't break this roster up immediately. Let ZTR continue to work with these players. <sighs> After that, we have FlyQuest dominating complexity on Anubis, 13-6. Something, something, fuck your pickums. 
Everybody had FlyQuest 03, me included. Nobody expected Complexity to be this wretched to start off the major, and apparently we were all just goddamn wrong on that front, because my god, were Complexity terrible in this game. And not only were FlyQuest playing amazing, don't get me wrong, but Complexity shot themselves out of this game eight different times, and listen, throughout my coverage of Complexity throughout this year, I've been very sympathetic to what Allegiant had to deal with considering that he has had some of the least help out of any top five player in the year, but um, Allegiant, at least in this game specifically, you were the problem, big dog. I don't know how else to put it, but Allegiant has to be one of those guys with just a terrible mental, and we got on Halzerk about this earlier in the year, but Elige is very much in the same way tilting himself out of these games. And listen, I'm nothing if not sympathetic. I routinely want to reach for the shotgun whenever I play CS2 as well. But the difference is I'm not being paid top dollar to play at a major. So Elige, you have to like be able to control yourself, bud. And it's going to affect your other teammates because you're the leader. I know JT's the in-game leader, but you are the leader of this team. You have been here before. You have played in all of the biggest tournaments. You have been a number one player in the world before. So you have to be the one to step up and keep yourself in the game when you're struggling. And instead, I'm having to watch rounds where you guys don't clear anything. You don't clear corners on the bomb sites. You're buying double op. At least you're not an opper. Why are you buying an op? You are my op right now, Elige. Meanwhile, you have the f***ing Australians playing with devil magic on their side, hitting the spookiest unreal shots of their goddamn career. Alistair, who would be on the bench a week ago, is now suddenly the best opper in the goddamn world. And yeah, complexity lost. Moving on. Next up in one of the more fun games out of the first round, we had Liquid taking on Cloud9. Both these teams I'm expecting big things out of in the major. I did have Liquid going in as one of my 3-0 teams, so as much as I want the Cloud9 agenda to be alive, I was okay with Liquid winning this game in the end, 13-10. This was pretty much an entirely CT side affair. Neither team was remotely successful on their T sides. Um, for Cloud9, this is a bit of a worrying trend we're going to see throughout this major right now, is that their T sides are very flat and one-dimensional, and that um, really worries me because I actually think Boomich is a lot better of an in-game leader than what he has shown so far. I've been singing his praises throughout the last couple of weeks pretty wholeheartedly, but these T-side sets to start off the opening stage have been pretty lackluster, very one note. And speaking of tilt, you guys gotta be able to control Icy's mental better than this. Even when you guys are winning, this guy's tilting on some of these deaths and that just can't happen. He's a young, volatile player and you need him to deliver. That's where Boomich has to step up as the guy with all this experience to be able to let him know that, hey man, calm down, play your game, relax. For Liquid, like I said, a rocky T-side for them as well. And where I'm going to start with Liquid is actually Naf, because Naf is the linchpin for this team. Twist and Ultimate are the X Factor. You need them to deliver for Liquid to win, but Liquid relies on Naf being a steady, omnipresent force in this team, always consistent, always playing well, always putting up good numbers. And Naf right now is having his worst tournament all year. To put it in perspective, Naf has had two goddamn events the entire year where he failed to get at least a 1.0 rating. Two. Two. And one of them was before the last major, so he's only had one sub-run rating event since Copenhagen. That's how consistent Naf is. That's why I describe him like the reign of North America. He always gets his, and when he doesn't, it really exposes just how lackluster Twist is so far as a T-side caller, because Naf gives so much information, so much impact as the lurker, and when that goes missing, oh, things get rough. On the bright side, Twist and Ultimate had good individual games. Twist was incredible on the CT side on Ancient, some great re-entries onto the B bomb site. So Liquid, they stay steady. I am concerned with NAF right now. After that, we had Big taking on Passion UA, a rematch from the EU RMR B. Uh, this time around, Big once again take the victory, but this one was much more convincing to me. 13-9 on Mirage. 
This was a pretty unfortunate T-side out of passion. They get started on their major campaign looking pretty flat-footed. Jambo and Chilla specifically slowed down quite significantly as individuals. You had Fear leading the way with 19 kills on his own, which is remarkable in its own right. But if Fear is your top fragger, that's never ideal as he is the IGL. Meanwhile, for Big, they were just playing as a well-oiled machine. Searson had his best game I've seen from him in quite a while. 19 kills, 10 deaths, a 1.28 rating. His op impact was excellent. Tabson and JDC were also quite good. Rigon and Crimbo held it down on the extremities. This was just basically a straightforward, one-sided kind of gentleman sweep of a game. Passion, they're not done yet. They're still a young team, so we expect them to slip up here and there, looking to see Jambo be better in later rounds. After that, we had Fnatic taking on Wildcard, and let me just take a moment to address all you naysayers, all of you Stan disbelievers out there who put Wildcard as 03. You guys don't know ball like that. You guys don't appreciate real ethical hoops when you see it, all right? Stanislaw is one of those guys. If you think Stan isn't a good leader, if you think Wildcard aren't good at the game, I'm sorry. You're casual, because never in my life would I have expected Wildcard to go down 0-3, all right? Fnatic, they're fake. They are Blame F and everybody else. And listen, Blame F was good here on Mirage, but you know who was better? JBA on the second half. He had three kills on the first half. He gets onto that second half, he goes nuclear, ends the game with 19 kills, 11 deaths, 1.26 rating. That's my guy. And you know why? Because Stanislaw has developed him to be the next guy up in NA, all right? Enough of this lake nonsense, all right? GBA is the man I trust. All right, listen, that was a little bit, a little bit hyperbolic. I like them both, okay? Anyways, wildcard are great. Once again, I think their system is so good. The way that they initiate and play around each other is so much better than the tier two team they are clearly labeled as. I am not surprised to see them beat Fnatic. Fnatic, for good reason, were one of those teams that I knew would not qualify out of this opening stage. As much as I like Blame F, as much as I like Maddie's, I knew, I just knew based on how they played in the RMR, they were not going to do good, and they stunk it up. More on that in just a little bit. And rounding out the first round of play, we have two pretty one-sided affairs. We have the Mongols destroying Rare Adam 13-2, and then Payne destroying Imperial 13-5. Two domestic matchups at the end of the bracket. Mongols were pretty much never going to lose to Rare. Yes, Rare are the hometown Chinese team here in the Major, but Mongols are not just the best team in Asia. Frankly, Mongols are kind of peaking at the right time to where I am extremely excited to see what they do in the elimination stage. Spoiler alert, the Mongols were one of the teams to go 3-0, just like in my pickums, and I'm not surprised at that at all. Unlike Team Liquid, the Mongols do not seem to be inconsistent and streaky against worse competition. They are currently only getting better they've had enough time to develop this roster they are in a great position in a local major to actually do some damage and they start off their campaign well here by eviscerating rare adam i again just not surprised a good game for the mongols pain versus imperial kind of a similar story pain are also a team kind of peaking at the right time we need to talk about the fact that Lux has quietly over the last couple of months been on an insane run, averaging a 1.28 rating over the last couple of months of play. He's not just playing like a star, he's playing like a superstar. And when you consider the Big Azera system around him, that makes Payne easily the best team in Brazil. I know I've talked a lot about MIBR being that, but I think MIBR are much more the team of tomorrow, whereas Payne are the team of right now. If you want a Brazilian team to believe in, believe in Payne. For Imperial, they just need different pieces. Decenti, no way, these are pieces to build around. Maybe you keep Phelps, but Vinny, I think at this point his system is just not gonna work on the long run. I think Imperial need a lot of work. They are the weakest Brazilian team at the Major. All right, so with the first round out of the way, we have set the table for the rest of the opening stage. Let's go ahead and speed through the second and third round best of ones. That way we could talk about our first couple of best of threes and wrap up the video in a reasonable amount of time. In the second round, Cloud9 would take care of Fnatic very easily, 13-5. Again, this should be no real surprise if you're actually watching the games, because again, Fnatic are just Blame F and a bunch of other guys trying to get by. For Cloud9, you got everything you wanted. You got Ancient, a map they like to play. You got Icy, Axile, Heavy God, all having great impact. Boom match calling a good T-side for once. And yeah, they steamrolled him. Good job. After that, we had Big taking on FlyQuest in the upper bracket. FlyQuest continued to dominate everyone's pickums, burning them to ashes in front of our very eyes, taking care of Big in short order, 13-5 on Nuke. 
FlyQuest are currently on an insane nuke streak in their own right, I believe being undefeated on nuke over the last three months up until a certain thing that happens later on. So they continue their nuke streak right here, looking very good. I don't know. I guess they just saw themselves over the edge of the abyss against the Drillas and got a Senkai boost off of that, and now they're the best team in the world. Following that, the Mongols dusted off MIBR 13-6 on Ancient. Again, no surprise there. The Mongols are just playing out of their mind. It looks like nobody can stop them, at least in the opening stage. Obviously, MIBR are still more than good enough to make it out of this field. It's just going to be a question of whether they can make it out of the lower bracket at this point. No big deal to lose to the Mongols, in all honesty. But speaking of a very big deal, we have Complexity taking on Passion UA, where Passion UA knocked off Complexity on Anubis 13-9. Oh my god, everything's a disaster. This is a classic complexity loss where Liege was actually good, Grim had a good game for once, everyone else sucked, it's all pain, I hate it all, Jambo had a great game on his own right, which is sick, but why'd have to come at the cost of my glorious King of Liege? Why does complexity continue to hurt me, please why? We then had a Herculean effort, a truly mythical level performance where Verse Pro triumphed over the true Goliaths of the world, Rare Adam. Verse Pro got a win. That's more than most of us expected at this point. They beat Rare 13-4 on Anubis. Congrats. We then had Liquid getting Arm Arm Revenge on Wildcard on Inferno 13-10. Despite Wildcard having an incredible Inferno in their own right, it turns out when Twist has more than 4 kills, they're a lot harder to beat. Also, Yakindar had the rare great game, despite him still being one of the most infuriating players to watch in all of Tier 1 Counter-Strike. Would still like to point out more on this in just a minute. Naf once again being the lowest rated player on Liquid in back-to-back -back games, just not looking like the NAF we've seen all year long, which is just a major concern for me. We then had yet more Brazilian on Brazilian crime, Furia taking on Imperial on Anubis. Furia eked out a close win, 13-11. The big notes for me here, this was a major bounce back game for Kay Serato. Skulls continues to look like one of the better players on Furia in general. Such a great turnaround from his absolute low point in Liquid. For Imperial, you had the great game out of Decenti. You had amazing impact out of Phelps. You even had a great game out of Try. I don't know, it just seems like Imperial are missing one or two pieces to be competitive inside their own region, and Furia just simply have a better set of personnel to compete against them with. It just feels like in those Brazilian matchups, you get a lot of just head-on, aggressive action, both teams wanting to take massive shots at each other, very scrappy, very aggro Counter-Strike, and just it's going to come down to who has the better aimers in any given match, it feels like, and that's going to be Furia for my money pretty much every time. We then had a surprise victory, Gamer Legion over Pain 13-10 on Nuke, and listen, this was just a Gamer Legion masterclass, Slend and Flamas and Volt, all looking incredible. ZTR just has such a great feel for calling around Nuke. This was not big as Zara's best performance, both as an individual, and I felt some of the T-side rounds were falling a little bit flat. It just feels like Gamer Legion ran the better system, because in terms of personnel, these teams are very evenly matched. After that, we had a dominant win by Passion UA over MIBR 13-5 on Mirage. This is the Passion UA that we saw peak so well during the RMRs. Fear, once again, having an incredible individual game as the IGL, 22 kills, a 1.87 rating. He's having an incredible time over in China right now. Jambo, definitely not as good as he was in the complexity game, but hey, fair enough, your in-game leader was fragging out of his mind. I guess that's just enough sometimes. For MIBR, you had, once again, just the usual from Insani and Safe looking excellent. Lukowski had a bit of a wretched game, which definitely held them back. A very winnable game for MIBR, but hey, Passion UA just looked legit as a roster. <sighs> okay, we're almost done with the best of ones, I swear. We have three more games. Big took care of Virus Pro 13-11, not surprised there, Virus Pro really struggling. Pain took care of Cloud9 in a very close game 13-11, Cloud9 definitely a winnable game for them but just couldn't get over the line in the end, shout out to Pain for continuing to play well throughout the tournament. And then, honestly, for Wildcard, this game's gonna hurt, they lose to Furia 16-14 on Vertigo, this one we caught on stream, and even though Wildcard had a huge lead going to the second half, they just slowly but surely bled rounds to Furia's T side, and then in the overtime, Furia just didn't look back and dominated their way to a victory. Definitely winnable for Wildcard, sucks to see them slip up like that when they could have had a nice win on their side. And with that, we have seeded the brackets, we are ready for best of threes, we are done with the best of ones for now. Thank God. Okay, so we have our first set of elimination and advancement games. We're starting with the upper bracket, a 2-0 matchup between Team Liquid and FlyQuest. And if we consult my pickums one more time, I have Team Liquid going in as one of my 3-0 teams, just so we all know where my obvious bias lies here. Now, we start off on Inferno, where FlyQuest dominate Liquid 13-5. And uh, yeah, I'm you know, listen, I'm getting a little doomer. 
I'm Doomer posing on Twitter. I'm crying. I'm seething. I'm molding because this uh, was an awful game from Liquid in every sense. Uh, nobody was efficient or impactful. Even Twist was only close to even. Doesn't quite break it. Meanwhile, once again, FlyQuest are playing with devil magic. They're just doing whatever they want. They can do no wrong. Alistair will just take repeats into nothing. Inns will continue to hit deagle shots that make my brain hurt. Vexite will just be Vexite. I don't know. They are the main character. We are just living in the story as NPCs, apparently. FlyQuest could literally do no wrong in this game, and it hurt me on a visceral, spiritual level. And I thought at this point, the liquid choke was on. There was no way at this point with NAF playing so bad for this tournament, Ultimate having a bad start to the series, Yakindar being Yakindar, I didn't think Liquid would be able to pull out of this tailspin. But then a man, a myth, appeared on the horizon. A bright light shed across me in the depth of the night as I stared into the abyss. And what was it? It was the bright smile. The best teeth in the game, they say. One, Justin, Savage, JKS, that smile, that goddamn smile. On Anubis, JKS came out of the woodwork with a 24, 8, 1.8 rating game when Liquid absolutely needed it to bring them back into the series. I also do have to give credit, as much as I hate everything that Yakindar does on the server, he was also very good when 16 and 9. Twist was great, Ultimate was great, Naf continues to boggle my mind and struggle, but it was enough. Despite, again, the devil magic from FlyQuest throughout this series, where, you know, Dexter would just be hitting one taps as he's going through water. Like, Dexter, what are you doing? You're not built like that. But right now he is. Alistair and Vexite also devil magic the entire time. But somehow, somehow, JKS kept us in this game. Tactically speaking, I don't really have much to add about what Liquid's, you know, formula for success was here. I couldn't remember the word. Please excuse me. Um... But they just kept hitting the A-bomb site over and over again. JKS just ruthlessly entering late into the rounds, just being the vanguard force that Liquid needs. And it was working. Liquid got so many successful A-mid pinches off. They didn't really touch the B-side too much, at least from my recollection. It's kind of a bit fuzzy because all the games are starting to run together. But JKS just had incredible impact. And sometimes you just need that catalyst where one player pops off and just gives you guys, like, you remember who you are. You remember your Team Liquid. You're supposed to be the best team in this field. You know, it just gives you that shot in the arm to really pull together. And most of all, protect my pickums because that's what really matters. And then we had into Nuke. And I'm concerned heading into Nuke because, again, FlyQuest have been undefeated on Nuke recently. I don't think it's against the best caliber competition, but it does mean they're good on the map. Liquid can be up and down on Nuke. I was very concerned. And then Liquid walk out 12 to 0. Just annihilate FlyQuest on the first half on CT side. Now granted, it was not without shenanigans. There were a handful of rounds, especially in that first half, where it was very clear that had they just won one of these clutches, FlyQuest could have made this game a lot more competitive. The one that's definitely going to stick out is on round 5, where Alistair is just operating in a 1v4 with the op. He gets the two incredible picks down into ramp, has the bomb, gets down and gets the bomb plant, gets it all the way into a 1v1, but just isn't able to finish up the round. If Alistair wins a 1v4 clutch, you know, that swing of momentum could have made the game a lot more interesting. There were just a lot of examples like that, where FlyQuest had moments where they could have gone rounds over the board, but Liquid were just better at finishing off clutches. And again, the personal performances were great here from Liquid. Ultimate and Twist are still getting their numbers. And as much as I do sit here and routinely say that Yakindar is the worst aspect of this team, he was great in both of these last games. I can't take that away from him. He was one of the best performers on Anubis and Nuke. I wish he would sit further away from his monitor, but here he made it work. I can't even really bitch about it because he was just good. Now for FlyQuest, is this the beginning of the end? Yeah, I don't think so. I think FlyQuest have shown a much, much better form of game in this compared to the Asia R Mars. So I would expect them to beat one of the worst teams in their following two matches. They got two more attempts. It would be a shame if they got eliminated from here. Uh, but thankfully, Liquid keep the Pickums alive. Speaking of the Pickums being alive, we have Rare Adam versus Fnatic in our first elimination game. And oh boy, do I have a lot to say about Fnatic. Now, first off, not really going to go about this game by game. I want to firstly give full credit to Rare, 
for playing a very gritty series because they start off with a very dominant first half on Ancient where they then conceded the second half to Fnatic in quite a dramatic way. Their T side was incredibly flat and they were definitely in a position to win that game every time but just couldn't pull it over the line. And then they found themselves in an interesting position going into Inferno where they initially went down 0-6 to Fnatic who were playing an incredible CT side to start and then proceeded to sweep the rest of their T half, six straight rounds, off of the back of Child King, still an unfortunate name by the way, having an incredible pop off to keep Rare Adam alive, facing elimination in front of the home crowd. We switch sides to the CT side, we get an absolutely anemic and shit and terrible T side out of Fnatic, Rare Adam managed to turn what should have been a for sure elimination into a second map win which moves us into vertigo where rare adam destroy fanatic to the tune of a 13-4 scoreline a pitiful pathetic whimper into the night as fanatic get eliminated in their worst major performance as an organization as long as crimson has been on the team going out 0 and 3 and at this point can we not admit that this is the end of fanatic this is the final gasp they have died an untimely and dragged out death and now we need to look at a serious attempt at a rebuild because Fnatic have been holding on to the dregs of the former dynasty that was last seen winning tournaments in 2020 during the online era you see Fnatic are currently experiencing what i like to call the chicago bulls effect where you have a game-changing dynasty centered around a few unique hall of fame players but then, as that dynasty has petered out, you have never truly embraced change or gone through a true rebuild. You've always held on to the dregs of a dynasty of a bygone era, refusing to admit that you are no longer the top dog in the space. You have never embraced true change. You have squandered the talents of players like Brolin over the years, refusing to branch out and truly build something new. You have kept Crims far past the point of his illustrious Hall of Fame career and allowed him to continue to stagnate and hold this team back instead of embracing a new beginning. This is what Fnatic deserves. They need to give themselves a chance to be born again and stop being in the nip wormhole of never truly actually embracing the new era of Counter-Strike. Literally everybody named BlameF or Maddies should be off this team during the offseason if Fnatic are at all a serious organization. This was a pitiful result, them losing against the worst team in the field, no offense to Rare, and then going out in such a pitiful way. Alright, our back two series for this video were very one-way stomps, so I'm not going to waste too much more of your precious time. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video, by the way. Uh, Complexity dusted Imperial in an elimination game. Complexity keep their tournament's hope alive, and unfortunately it is the end of the road for Imperial. They are a roster with a lot of upsides. I hope they continue to iterate and improve in the offseason, and we see yet another good Brazilian team heading into next year. For Complexity, good job. This is the bare minimum. You guys should not lose to Imperial pretty much ever. Inferno, Ancient, 13-4, 13-5. Elise played a great series. Floppy played a great series. Graham and Halsic were good. JT called good strats. Good job. You guys managed to stay alive for now. I think the way out of this tournament for you guys is bleak, considering you have Cloud9 in your next matchup. But they could still do it. They could always still do it. I want to expect more out of Complexity at this point, but I feel like that's a fool's errand. On the other side, we had the Mongols taking care of Gamer Legion in the 2-0 advancement game in short order. Gamer Legion are a team that I expect to do well throughout this event and might even sneak into the playoffs. However, being the Mongols was simply too tall a task, as Mongols just appear to be turning the corner in a big way at the right time. The question remains, will the Mongols do well in the playoff stage? And frankly, I hope they do. Again, this series, not close at all. 13-5 on Mirage, 32 on Anubis. The Mongols are in the playoffs, and both of my 3-0 predictions were correct. Yes. All right, I'm not going to hold you guys any longer. We have more recaps coming your way as the major heats up. Keep an eye out here on the channel, so make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. If you're watching this video right now, there are odds are that if you go over to my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash lionheartcs2, I am live, co-streaming the major. Come on by, draw me a follow, hang out, and let's have fun. Consider joining my community Discord as well, top link in the description. All that good stuff. Thank you to my channel members, Justin, Jesse, Furley, Milan, Berta, Bubbles J, and Dr. Cockter. If you want to support me directly, you can do so at the link in the description. It helps out immensely. Other than that, I'll see you guys soon with another recap. Hopefully your pickups do good. Peace.